So the next trap we're going to look at is one for codling moth. Um, codling moth, as we mentioned, is the insect that uh, lays its eggs on apple and pear fruits and the caterpillars bore in and make the wormy fruit. So in this case, we're going to try to catch as many of the adult moths as possible. And um, researchers found that molasses is an attraction uh, to the codling moth. So we're going to use a quarter cup of molasses and again, making a 10 to 1 uh, solution with water to molasses. So I'm going to add 2 to 2 and a half cups of water to that. And then I'm going to add in a quarter teaspoon of yeast. And the purpose of the yeast is just to help the molasses solution uh, ferment more quickly. And it releases more volatiles. And the codling moths are attracted to that. You can use any kind of container to put this in that has a wide open top, such as a plastic, a small plastic bucket or bin. In this case, I took a gallon um, apple cider jug and cut the top off, and that will work just fine. And then you need to poke two holes, again with a knife, or I used a soldering iron, and then I used a wire um, hanger to put through that or you can use a piece of twine or, or heavy string, anything that will hold up. It is fairly heavy and then we're going to hang this in the apple tree and uh, the colleen moths will be attracted to this and fly in and land in the molasses uh, solution and, uh, and die in there and over a period of several weeks you'll catch a lot of them and then you will just dump this out and refill it and, uh, and continue. You want to hang traps in the orchard from approximately late May through early September in northern Utah, and you start three to four weeks earlier in southern Utah. Okay, a tool like a codling moth bait is usually not a standalone control. That is, that it won't provide enough control to use it just by itself. And so usually you need to combine this with other types of methods, and we call this approach integrated pest management, or IPM. So another way that you can help lower codling moth populations in your home orchard is to again use the corrugated cardboard with the ridges. You want to put the ridges toward the trunk of the tree and we can use something like a staple gun just to simply apply it. So wrap it around the trunk and put in a staple to hold it. You want to apply these beginning in about uh, late, um, mid to late June and continue trapping with uh, the cardboard traps for the larvae uh, through early September. And what, what happens is when the larvae exit the fruit, they, they climb up onto the trunk to spin their cocoons and pupate. And they really like this car cardboard uh, protection. And so they'll climb up in there and you'll see a lot of webbing, a lot of uh, cocoon spinning. And so you can pull these off about every two weeks um, and replace them with a fresh cardboard strip and this way you can help remove a lot of larvae from your home orchard. Another uh, IPM tool that the homeowner can use is to bag fruit. Um, you can purchase commercial fruit bags through online garden supply centers, or you can use small paper bags um, of your own that you punch a hole in the bottom and slip over the, the fruit when they're quite small. At this point in time, my fruit are still too small here. You want to wait until they're about a half inch in diameter before you add the bag. And the bag will uh, keep the codling moth out. And, uh, and then you remove the bag just a week or two before you're ready to pick the apple. And the sunshine will color up the fruit and you'll have a very um, nice looking fruit to eat. Another tool that we use is insecticides. And insecticides are a part of IPM, but with the IPM approach, we strive to use as few sprays as possible. So the Utah Pest website has an uh, IPM advisory specifically for tree fruit uh, growers and home orchardists, and it tells you the timing for when the codling moth um, uh, moths are flying, when the eggs are starting to hatch, and this is the, the key time of when you need to apply an insecticide to prevent the fruit from becoming infested. So you can access this information at the Utah Pest website, which is www.utahpest.usu.edu.